to smile because it's almost the weekend. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Emily and today we are going to be working with the TheraBand for stretching. The TheraBand is a rubbery piece of equipment that we use at the day program that helps with stretching, range of motion, and resistance to build up muscle. Now, hopefully houses have these TheraBands, but if not, we understand because times are hard right now. Um, there's also different strengths and resistances, so do choose wisely. But later on, we'll be working on boxing. But for now, let's just get started on our TheraBand stretching. So first, what I like to do is wrap my TheraBand around my hands. Kind of feel like a karate warrior when I do this. And I like to have my thumb sticking out, and then I just pull horizontally, so pull it outwards. And you feel your muscles start to work when you pull it. Pull out. I did this probably about 10 times. That was a good, a good uh, number to do this exercise. So pull out 10 times. Yeah. Then when you're done, you can fold your TheraBand in half, which makes the resistance even tougher. I did it in four. Let's see how strong I am. Oh no. Nope. It's too hard. So that's a good uh, piece of advice if, ooh, muscles. That's a good piece of advice if your TheraBand you have at your house is too easy, you can always fold it and make it a tougher resistance. I only did five of those because that was really tiring. But the next one I'm going to do is um, something we do at the program where we put the TheraBand on the back of your wheelchair. I don't have a wheelchair, so I'm just sitting in an office chair, so I'm tying it to the back of my office chair, pulling it up over my shoulder, and let's just do some basic pulls. Two, three, four, five. This really helps you work those arm muscles. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, slowly sit up and have your staff or caregiver help you change to the opposite side. We're really going to stretch out our arms in today's exercise. Let's do another ten reps. Hopefully you guys are staying healthy. I was sore from the other day's stretching workout, which is sad, but it's good to get moving again. What do you guys think? All right, now stop if you want and do some, yeah, stop and, ooh, you don't wanna hit yourself in the face, no. So hold it really tightly. Hold it as tight as you can, because if you let go, it'll slap you in the face and that's just scary. So you're gonna do a 90 degree, or a square elbow bend. So pull it, and we're gonna be making a square. Whew, that is hard work. Pull it and bring it up. So rather than just pushing straight out, we're kind of doing a curl up like we would do with our biceps, you know, when we have muscles. So this is a good exercise to strengthen your biceps. Also just keep the range of motion going. All right, so finally, what I like to do is keep it open. It kind of looks like a big spaghetti noodle. And then fold it in half and bring it up over your head and stretch. That feels good. Now, when you pull it like this, your arms tend to go backwards a little bit and the TheraBand will go behind your head. This is normal and it also actually helps to loosen up your back a little bit and expand your range of motion in your shoulders. Do what you can. A lot of you uh, have trouble reaching up over your head, so go as high as you can, but let's try and get those arms up. Now, here's my long spaghetti noodle TheraBand. Um, some of you find it easier to tie it in a knot at one end so that we make a circle. So let me tie it for you. And ta-da, we have a circle. Now, it's easier for some to do more exercises like this way. If uh, you don't have good hand grip, you can use your wrists and just pull it. But that is it for today, guys. And we are going to come later to learn boxing and stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back to our lesson today, which is boxing. So we are gonna do some boxing with different weights, TheraBands, and even I have boxing gloves. I 
pulled out of the garage. So, we are going to learn different types of boxing techniques, which are four. And you can use these throughout any exercise. You can also use this with a TheraBand. So, oh, no, there's no Emily, it's not a scarf. No, it is a stretching and muscle toning piece of equipment, yeah. So you use it like that. If you don't have one at home, like we previously mentioned, it's okay, you can use a weight for this exercise. Um, try and use like a one pound, because here I'm using two pounds and that is just too heavy. Yeah, no, don't tell anybody. I'll tell people it's 20 pounds. All right, now, let's go ahead and loosen up a little bit. We just did our TheraBand stretching, but let's loosen up our muscles and stretch them out, especially our shoulders and our upper back, because that is what we will be focusing on today. Go ahead and start with some trunk twists. We did some trunk twists earlier this week when we were doing our exercise. Go ahead and do some windmills with your arms. If you have no room side to side, do these windmills. I have a wall next to me, so I have to do this. So pretend that somebody's sitting next to you. If you have somebody sitting far away from you, you can do these side to side stretches. Either one works, just as long as you're moving your shoulder muscles. All right, shake out your hands. We're gonna curl our wrists. Shake, shake, shake. All right, loosen up your fingers. All right, now, this is pretty cool, guys. I found boxing gloves in my garage. I'm a pro, I know. Let me put them on. I feel like Muhammad Ali. All right. All right, I'm ready, I'm ready. Now, wait a minute. Nobody told you how hard it was gonna be. And what? my thumb isn't even protected. That is not good. Okay, so if I get hurt, what? Okay, now how am I supposed to strap this on with one glove? Oh, there, I did it. All right, now getting them off is gonna be a challenge. So, I have my boxing gloves. This is our boxing stance, our ready position. Keep it kind of right below your chin. So put your arms up right below your chin. And we're gonna start with a jab. The jab is just a push forward. Push, 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 push. Back to ready position. Okay, so that's the jab. And that's one of the most basic moves. Next, we have the cross. You're gonna go across your body with alternating arms. Across, across. I'm just using boxing gloves because it shows up better on the camera than my hands. Yep, there's my thumbs. If you don't have boxing gloves, that's okay. Just follow along. Next is the hook, the hook shot. So you bring it around and back to your chin. Bring it around and back to your chin. Bring it around, bring it around. Good. All right, and finally, our last one we're gonna learn is the uppercut. Put your boxing gloves or your hands by your chin, ready position, and you're gonna swing upwards. Swing upwards. Yeah, you guys are getting the hang of this. I tell you guys, this is a really good workout, and I'm just sitting in a chair. All right. Now, the real challenge, how do I get these gloves off? My dentist is not gonna be happy with me. All right, so you just learned all four boxing techniques. Let's try doing it with our trusty friend, the TheraBand. That's a chair. I am going to, again, put the TheraBand on the back of my chair. You can put it on the back of your wheelchairs and wrap it around you. I saw this on YouTube. A lady was teaching seniors how to box with TheraBands. So she put it behind her and you just do your boxing techniques like you would, but now you're adding some resistance to it. 
So resistance means that you're making it a little bit harder for yourself, um, but you know, you can't accomplish a lot if you're just doing things the easy way. So it's always good if you can to add a little bit of a challenge into your workout. So now we're doing the cross pushes or punches that we were doing earlier. Just like we were doing boxing, but now we are pulling this TheraBand. All right, now, who can tell me what move this is? Going around and back to your chin. Yeah, this is the hook move. So this one, we're pulling the TheraBand out even farther. That's a good one. But let's do our uppercuts now. Up. All right, up. Uh, remember, please don't hit yourself in the face. Or your neighbor. We are just doing some personal muscle strengthening here while we're all at home. All right, once we're done with that, thank you TheraBand, but I'm tired. My arms are feeling the burn. Time out, let's get some water. Make sure you have water at home, drink up. No, yeah, sweating, it's hot today. Now, if you have weights at home, now would be a good time to bring it out. You can do the same punching moves with weights. So I'm showing you three different types of a workout within one. So you can punch with just your hands, with the boxing gloves, with the TheraBand, and now we're using a weight. Which it's again, it's only my two pound, and we're gonna move on to the cross punches. Just two pounds, so if you have a one pound weight, or you could even use a water bottle, something like that, that would just help you, you know, push yourself a little bit more during this exercise. Now, this one's called the hook. Did you see my little pirate hook there? Look. Like Captain Hook. Go around and back. Yeah. You guys, I'm learning a lot of new exercises by doing these videos. All right, uppercuts. Don't hit yourself in the face, Emily. At home, don't hit yourself in the face or your neighbor. Don't go too hard, just enough to get a workout in, yeah. All right, shake it out, take a deep breath, and relax. Oh, it's my TheraBand. How about we do some boxing with our TheraBand again? This is probably one of the easiest ways to box is with the TheraBand. So let's wrap it around our hands like we did in the beginning, and we're gonna push straight out. Make sure you have a good grip on it so it doesn't come loose. Let's see, we'll just stretch that there, then stretch, stretch, stretch. So every time you do some of these punches, you're strengthening your muscles. Now we're doing our cross body punches. These are really simple exercises that you guys can do at home while you're sitting in your chair, while you're watching TV. So I'm gonna change position on my hands on the TheraBands. Grab it a little bit tighter. And I folded it in half, which is good because it's strong, it makes it strong. Now, we can do the same thing with the weights and the boxing gloves. If you don't have either of these, it's fine. Just do your best with whatever you have. Let's do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 10. Good. All right, let's do uppercuts. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good, so I'm doing these without anything in my hands just because let's say uh, you guys are at home and you don't have any exercise materials. This is still a perfectly good 
um, workout routine that you don't need any extra materials. It's just beneficial um, if you have them. So we're gonna keep doing our jabs. Jab, jab, jab. You guys can do it in different sequences to rhythms. If you have songs at home, you can play some songs and go uppercut, 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 uppercut. You know, and really learn these moves. As long as you're moving your body, you're getting in a good workout. All right, now let's do some hooks. Now, without all of this equipment, this exercise seems really easy. So that's the goal of resistance training, is that you, your body builds up tone and muscle to the harder stuff. And then when you don't have it, then these daily moves seem easier. I'm just doing some more hooks, showing you how to do it just barehanded. That'll do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something with the TheraBands, the weights, or the boxing techniques. So I'll see you guys tomorrow and have fun on the daily show. Bye. Today's observances. Oh, hey guys. I don't have any corn on the cob for my prop today for corn on the cob day, but I did find some popcorn. And that's why I wanted to talk about corn can be eaten in many different ways. But eating corn off the cob is one of them. Really, it's just an excuse for me to eat on the daily show. Corn on the cob can be cooked many ways, such as grilling it, boiling it, or roasting it. You can even season it with butter and salt, however you wish. I guess I should go now. Da! German chocolate cake day! Oddly enough, the cake wasn't created by a German or even made in Germany. Ooh, that's too small. The American baker Samuel German created this dark chocolate cake in 1852. The cake is filled with a coconut pecan frosting. Yum! Jacques Cousteau Day. Jacques Cousteau was an oceanographer. He created something called the Aqua Love. It's a device that regulates air while you are underwater. Cousteau also directed films, most notably the documentary adaptation of the book The Silent World, which won a Palme d'Or at the 1956 Cannes Film Festival. I can't see. Today's observances. Did you know that in 1184 BC, the Trojan War began? The city of Troy was sacked and burned, according to calculations by Greek man Eratosthenes, Eratosthenes, Eratosthenes. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in to 89.00 Discovery Day Program FM. Today we want to talk about inventor Edwin Armstrong. In 1935, he gave the first public demonstration of FM broadcasting in the city of Alpine in New Jersey in the United States. Stick around. Right after this, we'll be playing more of today's smoothest hits. On this day in 1963, President John F. Kennedy addresses Americans live from the Oval Office, proposing the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which would revolutionize American society as they knew it by guaranteeing equal access to public facilities, ending segregation in education, and guaranteeing federal protection for all voting rights. Animal Studies our animal study animal of the day is the hermit crab. Hermit crabs have a protective shell that they carry around on their backs. There are two different kinds of hermit crabs. There are land hermit crabs and sea hermit crabs. 
but both of them are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day and they are awake at night. Many people have pet hermit crabs. Do you know of anybody that has a pet hermit crab? Vegetation station. Put the lime in the coconut and shake it all up. Yeah, man, today's plant of the day is the coconut tree. That's about it for my accent. The coconut tree is found in the tropics, and it's used for a lot of things like shampoo and other cosmetics, not just for food. Did you know that these trees can grow up to 98 feet tall and can grow up to 75 coconuts per year? Interestingly enough, the name coconut is derived from the 16th century Portuguese and Spanish word coco, meaning head or skull. After the tree indentations on the coconut, the shell, it resembled facial features. Huh. Notable figures born on this day. On this day in 1956, Joe Montana, an American football player and sportscaster, was born. Notable figures who passed on this day. On this day in 1979, John Wayne, American actor, director, and producer, passed away. You may know John Wayne as also John Wayne Airport located here in Orange County. The Daily Dose of Art. Today's art piece of the day. This piece is called The Procession of the Trojan Horse and it was painted by Giovanni Domenico Tipolo around 1760. It symbolized the Trojan War, which was one of the most important events in Greek mythology. Career Spotlight. Today's career spotlight is focused on a marine biologist. Marine basically means water, and biologist means to study living things. So what do you think a marine biologist does? Yeah, they study the life of organisms in the water and how to protect them. Another one of their key responsibilities is to keep track of the population growth and decline. Marine biologists make on average $25,000 and $90,000 per year. Do you think you'd like a marine biologist job? You'd have to really like fish. Today's word of the day is surreal. It's an adjective meaning something is unreal, bizarre, weird, or unusual. The daily weather. Today's forecast is sunny with a high of 89 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget to drink your water and stay cool. That is the weather. Thank you and have a nice day. Did you know that sea sponges have no head, mouth, eyes, feelers, bones, heart, lungs, or brains, and yet they are still classified as being alive? They are a living organism. Well, that makes sense because SpongeBob is a sea sponge. Hey guys, I don't know about you, but I am ready to get out of the house. So today we are going to travel, but who knows where we're going? We're actually gonna take a birch field trip down to the San Diego Zoo in San Diego, California. I hope you like animals. Come along for today's field trip. All right, so I went to San Diego Zoo. They have a website where they have all their animals up on webcams, which is pretty cool because, you know, we're all stuck at home. So I went ahead and found this screen recording software and I was able to show you guys what I'm looking at right now on my computer. So first off, I want to look at my favorite animals, which are elephants. And this elephant looks big, doesn't it? What? Now it's like the baby elephant. But it's so cute. He's just bopping over to his mom, wagging his tail. 
Must be lunchtime. They're all doing something over there. Has anyone been to the San Diego Zoo before? I've been a couple times, uh, usually over the summer, and it's super hot. But um, it's always great to go see these animals, especially when they have uh, the San Diego Zoo. They're really good about having animals out in open spaces, make it feel more natural, and you know they're not in cages. And um, they they really treat the animals well there. So that's what I like about the San Diego Zoo. Plus, they just have cute little baby elephants. Well, I don't know what they're eating or like if they're watching like the news. I have no idea. But let's go back and see if we can find some other animals that are doing something a bit more interesting. Now look at all these animals they have. Now I checked on the penguins earlier and they were just hanging out. Let's see what they're up to now. Hello penguins! Oh, they're just swimming, huh? It's a hot summer day. are swimming and some of them are sunbathing and some of them look like skunks. It's kind of weird to think about a penguin living in Southern California, isn't it? But hey, they like to swim, stay cool, they get good food. <gasps> Something's coming. It's a human! It's a human! Must follow the human. Must follow human. Fish? I want fish. I'm hungry. Well, I think we have one penguin left that didn't follow the human. He's probably like relaxing now that he's got the beach to himself. Let's see if he's gonna slide down this little ramp. Come on, slide on your belly. Slide. Do it. Come on. <gasps> Maybe he'll do it. Come on. Nope. Alright, let's check in on another animal at the San Diego Zoo. How about some giraffes? Let's scroll down here and what? Those aren't giraffes. I don't know what those are. Looks like they have long faces and some horns, maybe. It's definitely not a giraffe, okay? Don't think those are giraffes. But I do remember giraffes being out there in the plains. Um, down at the zoo, you can take like these um, cars and go driving around the open land and look at the giraffes, and you can even feed some of them if you want, but I think it's pretty expensive. But yeah, I would say these are like, um, I don't know, bison? Buffalo? Anyways, that's not a giraffe, so we'll, go, we'll come back to that later. Oh look, they have San Diego Zoo masks. Alright, now. The panda was sleeping earlier, the polar bear was sleeping, but he was kind of waking up a little bit. Let's see if Sir Polar Bear is still sleeping. Oh, it's his nap time. He's got to keep shooing away those flies. They keep flying all over his face. He's trying to sleep. But the polar bear is another animal you might be thinking, what is it doing in Southern California? But these animals pretty much are born here and they grow up here, so they do get acclimated to the weather. And so that's good for them. Look at the size of his paws. Those are huge. So a polar bear, we think it's really cute, but really it's a bear. If you saw a bear in nature, you'd be really scared because they're big, they're heavy, and they have those big paws. So we're just gonna let this polar bear sleep for now. We don't wanna disrupt him. All right, now the hippos, I saw earlier it was a mom and a baby hippo. 
So there's the mom on top, and under her chin, she's got her little baby hippo. Do you know what hippo is short for? It is short for hippopotamus. Now here we have two hippopotamus, which means we have hippopotami. I don't know, English is confusing. So we don't have hippopotamuses, we have hippopotami, two hippos. But they're just chilling and laying in the cool water, absorbing the sunlight. I wish I had a pool, because I would love to do that right about now. But anyways, they haven't really moved in like an hour or so. Everybody else was pretty much napping, um, but the apes were like one of my favorites. Let's check in with our apes. All right, the guy on the right is totally me. That's me right now. Oh, what's that? Oh, big stretch. All right, so it looks like we've got two black apes and two reddish orange apes. And one of them is very fascinated with that playground ball. But look at the size of their hands. And then look at your hands. They look really similar, don't they? Anyways, some of them are sleeping. Some of them are just lounging. But this guy with the playground ball, he really wants to play. But I don't think anybody's awake. that guy's stretch big stretch okay go to mom he's like hello is you awake wake up she's like don't bother me oh watch she walks away look at whoa it looks like a human kind of the way he walks Do you guys like monkeys or do you think they're scary? I'm kind of like borderline. I think they're cute and then other times I'm like terrified of monkeys. But anyways, this poor guy with the playground ball is still waiting for somebody to play with him. He's just sitting there like scratching his head like, won't somebody play with me? Meanwhile, everybody else is just napping. I think he finally gave up. other monkeys got an itchy. There we go. Ah, doesn't that look like a nice life? Just lay out in the shade in the sun all day. No work to do, no stress. Oh yeah, just relax. That one monkey is hilarious. I don't think I've ever seen some monkey lay like that before. That's like the definition of relaxed. What happened to that little baby monkey? The one that just got up and walked away. Now he's using his feet to hold the ball. Those are big feet. Kind of looks like a sloth. So this is a pretty neat program, guys, that you can go to sandiegozoo.com and um, look at their webcams. And every day, you can watch this all day if you want to, every day. Um, they're live. So, oh, here comes a little baby. So these are live. So if you guys are tired of watching TV, um, you just want to kind of expand your knowledge a little bit, entertain yourselves, um, go to this website. They have live webcams where you can look at whatever animals you want for however long you want. And hopefully we can get back and see it in person soon. They're supposed to be reopening, I believe, in June sometime. But of course, while we're all on, in quarantine, there are animal caretakers that are there that are feeding them and giving them their medications just to make sure that they stay healthy. Well, maybe now he has a friend to play with him in the ball.
he's like pushing him away, like, go away, I'm playing. It's pretty neat to watch how animals interact with each other and learn their behavior. Although most of the time they're just sleeping. Oops, we got a scratchy. Alright, I don't think these monkeys are gonna do anything else. Except, like, stretch out like that guy. That's so funny. I've never seen a monkey do that before. This makes me want to watch Tarzan now. Uh-oh, here comes the big, the big monkey. Nope, just fell back asleep. That's the funny thing about watching these videos live, it's like you never know what they're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, they definitely have a lot of space, which is great to see, but I think they are getting kind of tired. So let's check in one last time on our giraffe friends and see if they are back. Aha! There's one giraffe. Standing in the shade, it's pretty smart because it's hot out today. Earlier I saw there were two giraffes and they were just eating their lunch. But this one's just hanging out. That's tall, huh? Have you ever seen a palm tree in person and like stood next to it? You know how tall those palm trees are. So imagine that a giraffe the necks are probably around seven feet long, just their necks. So their legs are probably just as long. Wow. But again, it's nice to see they have all that big open land. They can roam around. I don't think this giraffe is gonna do anything. Well guys, that's it for most of our animals. The rest of them are either eating or napping. Um, but this was a cool experience to do these virtual field trips. So hopefully in the future we can try and do some more. We can go to um, the Great Wall of China. We can go to Paris. Um, this was just a, a trial to see how this would work, but I like it. I think you guys would like to learn more about the world and travel. And I think Ian would actually be really good for that segment because Ian loves to travel. That's all for today's Daily Show. I will see you guys next week, but have fun tomorrow with JR. Bye!